minions to his lane. So um, it looks like we're going to have a lane swap because Goni has actually gone back and is now in the bot lane. So we we have a lane swap initiated on the side of SF5. Right, and it does look like um, SGS Hallelujah will be picking up this red buff for himself. So a quick one for him as well. And um, there are not gonna, uh, there is going to be a lane swap overall. And um, it's going to be up to SF5 to kind of control this bottom lane. Uh, but I'm not too sure if that's going to be the best s ideal situation per se for them. Um, because, you know, having this Yorick, even though his unbeatable one against one, but against a 2v1 lane, he kind of struggles a little bit. That's right. And a very interesting pickup coming in from uh, Chawi. I mean, we have to focus on that Timo. I mean, Timo kind of attracts my attention. I don't know if it attracts yours, but he has picked up a Doran shield as his starting item in the game. Uh, I think it's also just mainly because he just wants to sustain in lane, hit the level 6 and just be an annoyance all throughout the map. And um, it looks like Ben W will be covering um, this top lane for the side of Singapore Sentinels. Yeah. And he will have to play extra carefully. And um, this is slightly different from um, Ben W's um, play style. He used to really like to play this tanky top champion, but he's not having that right now. Instead, going for this Aatrox pick, but um, I'm pretty sure he has that just honed out for himself. That's right. I mean, if SGS is willing to pick up Aatrox for Ben W and Timo for Chao Wee, they should be more than able to handle any sort of um, play coming in on the side of SF5. It shows that they are confident with these picks, and here Karnik taking a huge chunk in the mid lane. Uh, Tugi doing some extreme damage onto um, Karnix. Right, and um, at the same time, Singapore Sentinel is just making full use of this 2v1 down at the bottom lane to put on some... Yeah, um, he actually managed to do some aggression coming in on the side of Singapore Sentinels. Uh, Aatrox managed to pick up the first blood against the duo lane and uh, after the blood well passive has been popped, uh, Sue from on Twitch actually manages to pick up the counter kill on the side of SF5. So it's a support for the top laner. I don't know whether SGS wa really wanted that trade, but uh, both junglers really mirroring each other because Stalkang as well as Hallelujah both decide to make a trip to the top lane, get netting a kill on the side of both teams. So we have first blood going to SGS and the uh, counter kill coming in on the side of SF5. So kills are one to one. Goal is dead even right now with SGS having a slight goal lead. Um, and we have some amazing aggression coming in, piling with the stun. And here we have Hallelujah, Hallelujah dueling one on one with Sue. And it looks like the red buff pick is going to pick up that kill onto Sue. Hallelujah picks up a solo kill for himself. Job well done. So Singapore Sentinels are up one kill. And by coming in the mid lane, non stop aggression, forcing the flash out of Cryonix. And it looks like Cryonix is going to have to play much safer in lane right now. And Let's just take a look at what's going on around the map. So, so many kills that, have, that has happened and after the two kills, Singapore Sentinels are 500 gold in the lead. And if we look at the farm as well, um, both top laners kind of being even, um, you know, kind of setting the pace here, even out with each other, even though they are in uh, the 2v1 lanes, being able to pick up some farm, that's really a testament to their skill. And the bottom dual lanes and actually right here we have the um, fight in the jungle and Sao Kang finds himself too deep in SGS's jungle getting uh, ro with the rotation coming down f uh, from Cryonix he actually manages to pick up that kill and it looks like SGS is going for an extremely early dragon with four members of SGS rotating down to the dragon pit and actually picking up the kill onto um, picking up the, the dragon six minutes into the game so they're gonna re pick up this dragon really easily as cryonix is really low on health low on mana um and he's gonna just blue pill back so um sgs taking a very commanding lead six minutes into the game two kills ahead and they're actually about two thousand gold ahead so um we're gonna be in for a lot of action right now so if you're wondering why i'm actually talking so much right now because uh we haven't really kind of sorted out the mic difficulty so chris will be back in a short while and in the meantime, stay tuned to the casting. This kind of solo casting by me so far. So um, let's actually take a look and take stop at the items that um, Karnex has picked up because he, after coming back with that uh, one kill onto um, Stao Kang in the jungle, and here we actually have the flash being forced out by Tuki because Hallelujah comes in level six with the standard and the flag toss combo. 
he uses the Cataclysm to force that flash out of Tuki. <coughs> uh, on top of that, like I said, Kylie coming with the flash stun, the knockout combo and the CC chain coming in. Amazing play, that rotation from Kylie. Uh, Tuki, Oriana definitely did not expect that rotation. Being forced to actually sit there just to see his demise because that stun followed up by the knockout combo from Javan on the side of SGS, Hallelujah, Cryonix and Kylie doing a perfect job with perfect coordination coming in to pick up the 4th kill of the game. So right now the goal is very very well spread amongst the team. Aatrox with 1 kill, Javan with 2, Cryonix having 1 kill and um, Kylie pick up that assist as um, they make SGS makes an extremely good rotation down in the uh, bot lane. So amazing aggression coming in. Kyling now using that pink ward to actually um, you know deny some more vision on the on the side of SF5 and Yorick has to play extremely safely. The good thing about the 2v1, especially if you have a, a 2v1 lane against an Annie, what they what SGS has done is that they got um, the 2v1 lane. Chawi is able to kind of solo um, Goni as a Yorick because uh, there is no jungle pressure coming in on the bottom lane of SGS. This allowed Kyling to actually rotate all the way to the mid lane and easily pick up that kill onto Tuki, allowing Hallelujah to pick that kill up. So right now we actually have Tuki um, with the help of Sao Kang picking up his own blue buff and is able to do a fantastic job um, still CSing and actually being ahead in CS. Um, as compared to Cryonix and like I said Cryonix has three Doran's rings and he really really wants to put in this lane pressure and as I, as I speak Sao Kang actually rotates up to the top lane to join the dual lane of SF5 to actually put some pressure onto um, uh, the top turret and Aatrox is there and of course we actually have uh, some action in the mid lane and Tuki fought, uh, using his uh, Shockwave right here, bringing Karnix really really low and some more action coming down into the bot lane uh, Goldie forcing the, um, being forced to pop his ultimate onto himself and actually Hallelujah, Hallelujah using the Cataclysm onto the uh, the resurrected ghoul of Goni. so uh, very very good rotation coming in on the side of SGS able to pick up the kill onto bot lane and in response we actually have a Amazing, amazing ball breaker over the wall into the assault battery with four players of SF5 coming into the mid lane, picking the kill up to Cryonix. And it looks like they may just be able to pick up the mid lane turret, but are being forced back right now by Ben W and Hallelujah. So, after all that action, actually, let's just take stock of what has just happened. SF5 rotating up to the top lane, picking up the top lane turret, and um, SGS Hallelujah rotating to the bot lane, picking up the kill onto Goni. Um, and giving SGS a uh, 5 to 2 kill lead and finally as the top lane turret goes down the entire team of SF5 actually rotates to the mid lane ball breaker across the wall into the sound battery allowing um, allowing Sue to actually pick up the kill onto Cryonic so overall a lot of action coming in on the side of uh, both teams and it seems that uh, they are relentless in the kill so far and a really really good thing about picking uh, Timo as an AD carry and not really an AD carry this, this game because uh, Chawi is actually picked up a Cage's lucky pick um, with, and it seems to be building towards a haunting guys and look at the amount of uh, noxious traps he has actually put down all the little um, dumplings around the map and um, is able to actually kind of spot out any incoming gang so uh, Timo is going to be really really safe so far <laughs> in the bot lane so he's doing an exceptional job farming Chawi now at 97 CS compared to Su 72 and this kind of shows um, um, SGS's commanding lead right now so uh, we after the top lane turret has go gone down SF5 decides to put Su and Egg back into the bottom lane to deal with this AP the AP duo the duo AP coming in from SGS in terms of um, Timo as well as any, so let's just see. Finally, as the two duel lanes is going to meet up very very shortly, how Chawi and Kyling are on Timo and any deal with Sue and Egg. So if you actually take a look at as the two top lanes kind of deal with each other, Yorick, as Chris said earlier, um, it's going to be a huge lane bully. And Hallelujah coming in from the back, knowing that Ben W still has his Bloodwell passive, they can easily pick up the kill on to Guni and. Uh, just walk away from the resurrected um, Yorick right in the top lane so we actually have um, the red buff being picked up 
with the help of uh, Sona as well, I mean Egg and Sue, and the pressure is relentless uh, in the top lane as well, because after picking up that kill, Ben W and Hallelujah just go back with the minion wave, dealing so much damage to the top lane turret, and it looks like they should be able to pick that top lane turret up. And Cryonic is dueling with Duki, coming with the body slam, and actually just walking off using the barrel, uh, using the uh, barrel to actually use. Uh, Airbot Crescendo coming in, it looks like both Chawi as well as Kaling actually blew their flashes to uh, dodge the um, Crescendo and Tibbers right here chasing uh, Egg actually Kaling hoping to pick up the kill and looks like Stao Kang actually steps onto that Noxious Trap you know, preventing any form of any form of additional aggression from coming in and it's an amazing thing right here, we have Stao Kang actually picking up a very very early Oracle to actually continue to Put the aggression and prevent, um, you know, you know, kind of like looking out for the noxious traps on the side of the bot lane. So that's why the oracles was picked up, and Falcon decides to rotate to the bot lane. And as I sp speak of the bot lane aggression, because no pressure was put in the mid lane, Cryonix and Ben W just manages to easily pick up that mid lane turret for free. And if we actually take stock at the uh, turret count, SGS is two kills ahead. Uh, two turrets, no, one turret ahead with two turrets in your name and we have Hallelujah and Sao Kang actually uh, duking it out in the river and Hallelujah just forcing his way in using the Cataclysm, trapping both of them in a great command shot wave coming in uh, hitting two members but Hallelujah still manages to pick up the um, kill in the end a great body slam in addition to the flash coming in but it looks like Sue man managing to hit the poison tick actually goes in and Ben W just going in, popping the ultimate, taking down Egg, now turning inside to Sue because they have no mid lane turret. He looks like he is able to stealth away and they have no idea where Sue is. Let's just see whether they actually manage to... That ping pong is going to spot him out and Hallelujah kind of is going to continue to give chase and with um, Goni coming in to actually assist Sue, they, they actually decide to back off from that fight and decide that it is not worth it to actually pick up the kill on the invisible rat. And here we have Ben W actually counter jungling the blue buff, doing a very good job forcing the entire of SF5 um, to actually kind of vacate their positions in the mid lane and picking out a free blue buff right there. And Ben W will ro rotate to the top lane to pick up that massive minion wave to put himself even further ahead. Right now he's three kills and has a blade of Ruin King, Ruin King, and those minions will just put him even further ahead of a Goni on the Yorick. So even though. Um, Yorick is said to be a major, major lane bully. It looks like the bot lane here, we have uh, Chawi and Kailing actually camping in the brush using the Tibber Stun combo to easily pick off Sona before she can even use the Crescendo. So Egg just drops right there and Sao Kang using the Vault Breaker. I don't know if he, uh, she, uh, Sao Kang didn't have that um, Assault and Battery up. So um, that Vault Breaker, even though it managed to close the distance, uh, Sao Kang didn't manage to pick up the kill on the low health Kailing. So uh, on, on that note, it's a very good job coming from SGS. They knew that the Vault Breaker was down, that Stao Kang was still far away and they actually camped that uh, Golem Brush and as Egg and Su walked up to it, they just insta it Egg right there even before Egg can pull off the Crescendo. So all in all right now, SGS is 9 kills compared to the 3 kills, 24.9k gold compared to 18.5k gold ahead. So it is an amazing job that SGS is doing, show, showing complete lane dominance, complete control over the game. And and even with that very, very interesting pickup, uh, with the AP Teemo in the bot lane, um, they are showing that they don't need an AD carry to actually carry this game ahead. So this is going to be really, really interesting coming into the main game. So here we have Chawi dealing with Sue and Egg coming in for the uh, assist and he actually picked up the Twin Shadows, procking the Twin Shadows, allowing Chawi to easily get away from that um, uh, from that three-man kill one-on-one -on -one right there. So a very good crescendo hitting on two. Chawi comes back to actually try to pick up the kill on Sue, hitting the stun because Kyling had that Oracle right to actually spot out um, the invisible Twitch. And we have Hallelujah actually cutting off Sao Kang's escape route. Cryonix and Ben W just converge and rotate over the wall because they both have uh, jumps to get over that wall and picking up two kills uh, easily. So Sue and Sao Kang go down just because uh, they were really really greedy and wanted to kill that Teemo because Teemo is kind of like a bait in itself. They can easily pick up the um, 
Teemo kill. So I think Chris finally got his mic back. I really missed you because I've been talking for non-stop. So it's your turn. I think I have to give you a medal for that. It was the longest running. And right now we actually see Egg in a bit of trouble with Tibbers. And he will go down to that poison. And yeah, right now um, Wolf is just taking a break. I'll be taking over. And now Goni in a bit of trouble as well. Um, ben W picks up another kill for him. So they are leading. Um, in terms of kills by about 10 and right now actually Goni manages to stop that Bloodwell passes from Ben W so even though he went down in that exchange but um, nevertheless he did manage to you know just um, bait out that passive. So now that you're back what do you think of this Teemo pick? I mean I expected Teemo to build some AD but it seems that Chawi is building full AP this game. Well it kind of just shows that you are not limited to the meta game to win your games but uh, you have to realize that the most annoying factor of Teemo is when he goes AP and um, like what we see from the screen, Sue wow. just taking half of his health away Stepping on one, one trap Yeah, just on one noxious trap And um, Kyling once again just uh, rewarding, just maintaining full vision control for Singapore Sentinels And rightfully so, they have to make sure that they make use of this um, what advantage to you know surprise people and this is what Kyling um, has been doing consistently as well you know just deny vision just cap at one of this um, brush and then go all in with the T bus and uh, just let your entire team following up on that yeah that's right and um, when you talk about the meta game itself what are the actually advantages of actually playing a mid lane AP um, caster such as Gragas as well as a mid lane deep, uh, bot lane DPS champion such as Timo well, you can look at it in the aspect that, you know, you kind of just divide their resistances. Usually, um, when you have team heavily situated around AD, then it becomes an issue if your opponent just builds too much armor. But um, at this point of time, it's not an issue because they have um, all this magic damage coming in from both Teemo and um, Gragas as well. And if you look at it, they do compensate it with the Garvin. And uh, look down at Hallelujah coming in with the Flag Spear and um, uh, exploding cast just melts it right off the map and now Falcon is in a bit of trouble Kylie just following up with um, damage of his own now Gomi um, has to try to heal off for the entire team but Choi is just right behind them and he's going all over to that coming to the aid of Choi but Su is just pounding on to that Teemo but um, Ben W is ready and waiting to um, just kill off the resurrected um, Yorick right there yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, Twitch was re resurrected and they actually continue. And here we have a replay. We actually have Hallelujah coming in with the Cataclysm. And here we have that exploding cast insta instantly taking down Egg. And we have Sao Kang using the Assault Battery onto Cryonics. And right here on the minimap, you see Chawi just rotating down and Twitch. So popping his actually spray and pray, dealing an um, immense amount of damage. And as Sao Kang was actually the only one in the front line, he was really just taken down easily and Hallelujah just goes in because he knows that Chawi is there for the backup Ben W rotates down from the top lane coming in and allowing Chawi to pick up that double kill and they just pull on that full aggression taking the ace in right. the mid lane That's right and in the meantime during the replay SG has actually stomped down into the mid lane to take out the second tier turret so further building on to the advantage that they have right now so 20 minutes in having that 15 kill advantage and um, that 3 turret advantage as well, so it looks like this Teemo pick is working out for them really really well. Yeah, the fact that he's able to actually place Noxious traps just all around, I mean one of the advantages I kind of see as I saw Chawi play um, in the bot lane, most a moment Teemo hits level 6, Chawi is just able to kind of uh, ward out with his traps and this allows Kyling to just have free roam and kind of act as a secondary jungler because any um, her kit allows her to just have a stun every uh, 4 spell cast and this allows and we actually have some action in the jungle right now and Ben W now actually getting caught out because of his rotation but Kyling is just ready and waiting to back him up with that Sivers just you know he had, he had to blow that Sivers ultimate but nevertheless he did save Ben W and once more with that cataclysm into the exploding cast just locking everyone into place and Choi is just right behind to kill off and snipe off the target now Goni is in a bit of trouble and it looks like it's gonna be a double kill for Ben W but uh, at the same time TQ with that Orianna manages to pop that passive and uh, Ben W looks uh, still pretty much alive and that was a 4 for 0 exchange just going to show um, how much brute strength Singapore Sentinels have right now. Yes, and we really, really show the amazing power coming in from the S uh, the SGS team comp. Um, 
the, the synergy that they have, I find really, really strong because we saw Ben W being kind of caught off in the jungle, but the entire team of SGS was just ready to respond. We saw um, Hyling come, had the stun charged up, used the Tibbers, forced them to back away, and hallelujah, just beelined in all the way. Three-man cataclysm, uh, allowing an easy setup for Cryonix's uh, exploding cars doing immense burst damage and we of course have Chao Wee on Teemo to clean things up. That's right and you know something about this Teemo pick as well is that um, you know you're mentioning about this Noxus trap and you know how it effective it is in terms of map control and uh, because of how much damage they deal it kind of forces SF5 into a decision do they want to try to you know clear this mushroom but they do face this danger at the same time that the entire sort of um, Singapore Sentinels will be ready and waiting once they spot anyone out of position and just um, bring that person down from 100 to 0. Yeah, that's right. And we actually have the entire SGS team actually kind of circling around Baron and it seems like they have actually started Baron, Ben W and Hallelujah. Both have uh, decided to start Baron first and the entire team just joins in later. It seems that SF5 has no idea because the look at the vision control, they have completely no walls around the Baron area where SGS has the entire side jungle lit up and they take a 23 minute Baron extending their goal lead 42,000 in comparison to 26,000 on the side of SF5. Right, so a commanding goal lead and uh, that, that shows in the items as well. We do see Cryonics um, having the death cap completed on the side. So some immense amount of burst damage and um, given how effective that Singapore Sentinels have been they're just going with it, yeah, it's the once more, DQ getting caught out with the Tibbers and Ben W not securing that kill for either side. And A with that crescendo just missing, not killing anyone at all. Once more, Cryonix going in with that Cloning Cast, Charlie picks that up with ease. And a double kill for him, it looks like it's gonna be the mid inhibitor going down, uh, sorry, the mid turret going down for Singapore Sentinels. And it looks like they are not done yet, the Cataclysm goes in for Hallelujah. And uh, Cryonix just charges in with the Body Slam once more. Ben W is legendary, you know. Um, before the game started, we were saying that um, it's kind of a different pick for X Ben W to go up with this um, Aatrox pick because he used to go for this tanky top lane champion. But he has been playing this Aatrox to full good effect, um, having that 10 1 5 in terms of KDA. Yeah, and you're talking about Aatrox, which I was just about to mention because we were, talk we were focusing so much on the Gragas and Timo pick earlier, bringing so much AP damage to SGS. But we forgot that huge damage threat of an early game Aatrox coming in with the blood well, having the Blade of the Ruin King just being able to smash faces, especially the moment he turns on the ultimate. So the massacre, right? Yeah, the massacre. So he's able to actually have an increased range, increased attack speed, and I believe that uh, is able to give him so much more DPS. And you know, kind of, uh, in a sense, you know, kind of having that blood well, uh, it's just you know having two healths. And uh, right now we are into a replay. We do see um, the entire squad of Singapore Sentinels just grouping up right here. And TQ wanted to go in with uh, an initiation, but he just got caught up by Kylie's snap flash into Tibbers. And um, that's right. W just before the shockwave can come out, he actually gets taken down. A very good three, a two-man ultimate missing Ben W and Chawi. He um, it actually goes down to the uh, poison on the side of Timo. Sue getting knocked around by the explosive cast and the poison pick once again will take out Sue. So it was it all in all a 3 for 1 exchange in that mid lane fight. And right there we have SGS going in very strong, taking down the middle inhibitor turret as well as the middle inhibitor. So a very strong showing on the side of SGS. That's right and um, it just goes to show how, you know, how much hesitation on the side of SF5. Uh, we do see TQ, he wanted to make something happen but Kylie knew that, that mentality that he had so he went in straight away with the flash and went with the timbers and it was a straight clean kill after that. And this is the danger when you have uh, such a dangerous pick composition that um, the Singapore Sentinels are running right now. That's right, I really really want to commend the amazing rotations coming in from uh, Chawi. No one expects Timo to actually be the one rotating down and taking the kill. And right now and the Cataclysm goes down on to um, SF5 and it looks like the... Actually that was a pretty nice shot with the team. Singapore Sentinels into place but they are so far ahead. It's going to be quite hard for SF5 to follow up with that invitation. And uh, it looks like Singapore Sentinels come up alive on that one. And a triple kill goes to Ben W. Uh, that's going to be the... 
top inhibitor for them and uh, that's going to be the ending call to this game as you see Singapore Sun was just pumping down on the next turret. That's and right, it was a clean ace for them and it was an amazing play coming in. We saw once again the CC combo coming in from Hallelujah, uh, from Hallelujah and Kai Ling and followed up with the burst from Cryonix. It shows how strong this um, team Singapore Sentinels really really is right now. They are showing their first showing